Hello, today I'm going to show you how to install Koha. It's an open source library program which only works on Linux and you can install it only on, on Linux, Debian and Ubuntu and basically it gives you the web interface for your staff to, con to work on the system as well as a web interface for your clients like students like people who search for books to be able to look for the books or this is quite a nice system it's a very cool system it's open source it is if you're familiar with ubuntu and how ubuntu works you get a 17.4 release 17.10 release where so you could try um you get two releases every month no every year and they are based on like the month, 4 is in April, 10 is in October. Koha is very similar named. As you can see, we're gonna install Koha 17.5 now, which as you can guess came out in the fifth month of 2017, that's I presume is May, and the next release will be in 17.11. So it's very similar to Ubuntu in that sense. It is samely named, but let's Start and end. I will continue to talk about Koha a bit. So first of all, we open up a terminal. What you have to have is a Debian server, any Debian base, like a Debian server, either in Wittlebox or in Hard Metal, <laughs> and a static IP address. Like you can do it for the for your for your router for. The manual configure as this is just a test machine I'm doing it on. It is not a static IP address, so, but for, if you want to put it into production, the one you're working on, you have to have it with a static IP address, so, just know that. So, I'm not doing it in this one because I will remove, I will clean this virtual machine after this video. But we are using Koha. We are in the process of moving Koha to Koha at our university, so that's quite a lot of fun. And I love it, I love open source. And yeah, so as you can see, I'm just copying all the commands which you can see here into my terminal. This will install the latest today is the 27th of October, so 17.11 will nearly be here. It's the same method and there will be a link on the website to the Koha site where you can find like, because they got like free releases, they got like the old port. And then they got like the old, old port, and that's like the previous version, the previous, previous version, and then this version. So you can choose there what one you want to add, and then you can just change these ones. I will have two links in my video. The one is about a guy who made a video about Koha. He got like a already made with the machine of all the versions of Koha. And also instructions how to do it. So I took some of his construct instructions, add a link to his video and data in the description of this video, as well as the Koha instructions and I combined the two because I had a long time figuring out what's actually is working and how to make it all to come together. And I don't want to forget it. So I thought let's rather make this video of it. That can hopefully help you, as well as me, to remember what I've actually done. So as you can see, it's downloading packages now. It's a very nice way, as I realized I got like 70.5, which is like the official release. Every six months they got one, and every month they got a point release also. So it's like 70.5.1, 70.5.2, and... I think at the moment we are 17.5.5. So that's 
really good and it's very super easy to upgrade to the to the latest one. You just run the normal system updates in Debian, like sudo apt update and followed by sudo apt dist upgrade and it will update your system as well as Koha to the latest version. Every time after updating it there you will see like an error message. I don't know exactly why, but it's just like it's really really nothing. So basically you can just ignore that error message and move on because Koha is working correctly. I've already done it twice to update and it updates every time to the latest version. And yeah, so basically it's a very nice system as you can see it's takes some time depending on your internet speed to download all the packages and it's fantastic that there is an open source alternative that is good. You can also install other languages like system languages like Russian like all of them and every time when this updates you can just run like a command to update your language pack of your additional language because it by default comes with English and it will just update everything to the latest available which is really really nice. It is open source and free to use and as you can see it takes some time to get the updates but I'm gonna fast forward this part as yeah as It'll make the video quicker. See you soon. See you soon. Fantastic, as you can see, it's installed now. Now we have to configure a packet. As you can see, we install it also. And we just run these two commands one by one. And paste. And just ignore this for, for now. And then we run this one. As you can see, it says, it says it again, but ignore it again. Now we have to go to this document and configure it. So I'm going to use Nano, a text editor, to configure it, but you can basically use gedit or anything like this also. As you can see, so we will just say, let's say gedit. Get it, and then we just copy this command. I said Control Shift V into the terminal. As you can see, it opens up this text program, and now we have to add these two lines into here. So we'll just say eighty eighty one. Enter. Listen, or oh, eighty eighty. Sorry, like this eighty eighty one, and say save and close it. So basically, that's all we have to do. And now we run this command to get a packet back, I don't know how to say it exactly, a packet, a packet, and it's got all the changes. Now we have to create a library. So basically, here you can name your library to any name you want. So I'm going to call it test101. And you can call it your company's name or whatever you want. And this will basically create a library. You can also make more libraries in the program 
itself, we will just look at how it is installed. And now we have to, it created the username and the password for the library, so we have to find it now. So this is not needed, sorry. And here, this one, you should change the name of the library you just created. So from, in my case, test 101. Otherwise, it won't work. And let's write gedit again. gedit. And then we just copy this command. Now that's very similar, it's just inside the terminal and it's also very nice, easy program to use. Now we can just scroll down until the place where we see this. Like here, config, config, db scheme, db scheme, msql, it's a right place. So now we go down to user and we see our Username, we copy this, we will need it for later to open up Koha in as a web interface. And now the password, it's random every time, so don't try to use the password you see in this video, use yours. <laughs> My password won't work for you. And I'm going to save this file and you can print it out if you want to. You can always get it back again, yeah, so that's okay. Just need it, and I'm gonna close this. Now, we have to configure this one last for file, and change the name again to your library name. Test 101, and I'm gonna use, just to play around, now that now that this time again, you can just use gedit and it's all going to be okay. But I want to show it to you also, just like this. As you can see, it opens up inside your terminal. And you will see opac, opac, virtual host. You have to down, move down with your keyboard and just fill in here. 80 and internet internet virtual host so because you're gonna have two web interfaces one for your staff and one for your clients to connect it so now you say control x to to exit and yes to save the changes y and enter to go out now we are actually done all we are going to do now is we're going to save our data, we're going to reboot our system, and then we're going to put our IP address, and that's why it needs to be a static IP address, as I said before. This is just a test for the machine, I will throw it away afterwards, and that's why it's uh, not a static IP address, IP address for this, but you have to have a static IP address. This will be like your clients, clients and this will be your staff. So you put the up address, uh, colon, and this, and this. And let's reboot our system. And I'll see now. Fantastic. As you can see, our computer just rebooted, and we are ready to go. So basically, all we have to do now is to wait for the screen to turn on, and now you need to know what is your IP address. As you can see, it's from me this. It's going to off and on again just to make sure. Yeah. And as you can see, this is a fresh, fresh install of Debian with a start of with Debian 9 just as you would get and then you can just follow all the instructions I gave you so it's nothing weird and 
1.6.10.234 the computer IP address. You can look at this at any computer in your network. So it's not like only the computer it's, it's on. And then the star fun. And let's see if it works. <laughs> As you can see, it's searching. And yeah, so this means we have done it successfully. And now there's some more configurations which you can do and things like that. But the main thing is you could set up. You can use, you need to use this password for the first time to log into your system as well as your username and password let us see if it all works and yeah so then basically you can choose a language by default it's just English and then you can choose between as you can see it takes some time because depending on the speed of your computer and all those things then you have to continue to next step everything is fine everything is fine so yeah that's basically it and then you can just continue like this and enjoy your system thank you for watching see you later